Hey everyone, it's a uh, Woodman coming at you with a video of uh, how to pray for President Biden as a Republican. I'm not, I don't identify myself as a Republican. Uh, however, though, I've seen a lot of people who say that they follow Jesus, and I've seen a lot of struggle with just this new election and everything, and and I see a lot of distrust, uh, division, hatred, opposition, and Jesus actually told us to pray for those who have opposing views with us. And I think it's so important for us to remember, as one who says they follow Jesus, to to remember what he told us to do. And he, was told, he told us to to pray for our neighbors, to pray for those who are opposed to us to a certain degree, and I, and I don't even want to say that. I thought uh, President Biden's speech of unity was very beautiful and well put. And so I just want to help us remember who's really in charge, and that's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That's Jesus Christ. Our salvation isn't found in some political entity and we as believers who say that we love Jesus who say that we'll lay our life down for Christ but we won't do what he commanded us to do which was to pray for those who are opposed to us and even our loved ones so first things first is uh, with President Obama Friday we need to pray for a uh, we need to pray for the Holy Spirit to be around him. We need to pray for messengers to go there and to love and share the gospel in such a manner. You know, I, I think about Nebuchadnezzar uh, while Daniel, in the book of Daniel, I thought it was so crazy. Here's someone who came into Jerusalem, tear down the temple, and at the end of it, you know, God uh, put him in a trance for like a certain amount of time. And then he came out of it, and he was like, this is the true one God. And Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar's life changed after that. But then I also think about King David before he became king while Saul was reigning. David was so diligent about praying for him and, and caring for him and to not and recognize that God had put King Saul in place for a reason and a purpose and I'm not comparing Biden to Saul or anything like that but what I'm saying is those who call themselves believers were meant to pray for those during difficult times and we need to recognize who's really on the throne and so I'm gonna pray for President Biden. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for the beautiful country that we live in. Lord, uh, though it's difficult for us to recognize and grasp what's happening in our country, we need to know that you are in control, that you are the one that ordained this election, Father. And we need to not be so concerned about this. We should, as believers, we should be loving God and loving one another and being obedient to, um, to the governments that you have put in place. Father, uh, I pray that we have unity. Lord, I pray for you to bless President Biden. Lord, I pray for you to uh, just fill him with your Holy Spirit. Give him love, Father. Give him peace. Father, give him great discernment and wisdom and knowledge. Father, if there's anything that is not for you that Biden has in his heart, I just pray for you to just help him with that, whatever that may be. Lord, I have prayed for that you uh, bless him with good people in his life. I pray for you to send him messengers, Lord. I pray for you to have your hand and favor on President Biden. I pray for you to bless him, Father. I pray for you to protect him. I pray for you to encourage him. Lord, and I also pray for um, pres our Vice President Kamala Harris, Father. That's such a beautiful and awesome thing that we have a black 
female vice president, my father. And I just pray for you to bless that woman. I pray for you to give her courage, strength, and endurance, Father. Lord, I pray for you to uh, just be with her every step. I praise you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.